Now listen up, the end of daylight saving time is this Sunday, and that means clocks are going back one hour. For some, this sudden change can throw off our sleeping schedules. Joining me live with ways to properly adjust and prepare your sleep routine, Dr. Talavajula. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, thank you. So uh, we're coming into crunch time, but it is important to still begin adjusting our sleep routines probably now if you haven't already, right? Well, the good news is that this time when we push the clocks backwards, it doesn't require as much of an adjustment as it would during the spring forward time. Mm -hmm. uh, we might even plan to get an additional hour of sleep but in fact, recent survey-based data shows that people would rather use that one hour for something else rather than sleep. And usually people get maybe half an hour of extra sleep. But yes, if you're one of those people that works night shifts that needs to plan for a proper transition because this would be an extra long hour, this would be the time. If you're one of those people that has trouble sleeping in general, falling asleep, and then there's a time shift that causes you to you know, change your schedule around, it is probably better to start planning at least two to three days before, if at all possible, even a week, where you adjust your times slowly to the target time, if you can. Mm -hmm. And maybe over the weekend plan to have your meals a little bit later. And that way you can not be pushed into it harshly, but do a gentle switch. Okay, so those are some of the tips that you have. Are there any risks that people might not be aware of if they don't end up properly adjusting? For most people, typically, you know, you, especially this time in, in the, uh, you know, in the fall, the switch is not as harsh as I was uh, saying, but uh, we know that around this time, there's actually a high risk of heart attacks, of strokes, mm -hmm. of traffic related accidents, of medical errors, and uh, things like that, where if you don't plan properly, it could go sideways, especially around sleep deprivation. So that's why it's important to take a little bit of notice. In fact, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine has been advocating for completely abolishing the switching of clocks twice a year because of all of those issues and the hazards it posed to the community. Mm -hmm. What's your stance on that? I firmly advocate it. Uh, the switching of the clock, uh, you know, the Daylight Saving uh, Act, this was around the World War I when, you know, we were trying to save energy costs and stuff. And today, in the today's climate, that probably doesn't have much of a place. In fact, as it starts to get hotter, we are going to want to have cooler hours in the morning uh, when workers can work outside, when, you know, for commerce, for industry, for heat-related reasons. Standard time, which means the time that we are now going to be into in October, is the best kind for health, for, um, you know, financial reasons, for, as I mentioned, for commercial reasons, and across a variety of fronts. Yeah, it is good for our health. So any advice for people who do have to work irregular hours? I mean, I, I signed up to work this Sunday and didn't even realize it means, you know, like even less sleep for me. Well, it depends on when you signed up to work. <laughs> so you get an extra hour if, uh, you know, if you have been able to sign up a little bit after the clock shifts. But for people who work irregular hours, in fact, you know, many times your hours don't choose you. I mean, you choose your hours if you have the luxury. You also choose your careers. So what, probably one of the central concepts here is to understand your own brain. After a certain time, almost everyone knows if they are night owls or morning birds. So for night owls to have to work early morning shifts, that shift is very awkward. Mm -hmm. So if at all possible, pick shifts that you know is good for your own body type. And there are actually questionnaires that you can take. Now let's say you're forced to work outside of your hours. For most people, you want to plan for that at least a few days ahead and know that even the times that you're not working, if you're a regular night shift worker, you may want to try to keep your times as close as possible to your working hours so that your body doesn't um, doesn't fall out of alignment with its own uh, with its natural circadian rhythm. Over time, you can train your own circadian rhythm to certain schedules. You talk to families, you know, most families do understand that if you have to sleep at an irregular time, then, you know, you should, uh, you should be not disturbed around that time. You adjust your meals according to that. Try not to caffeinate too close to getting off work. That way, it's not in your system when you're trying to sleep. Yeah. We also talk about minimizing light exposure on the way back from work, because light is a very powerful stimulator of your mm -hmm. retinal ganglion cells that tell you when to fall asleep.
Yeah, Dr. Tala Vajula with UT Health Physicians. We appreciate your time this morning. All good tips because, I mean, whether we're falling back or springing forward, I feel like it always takes me a couple of days to get adjust back and adjusted to it. Thank you for having me. We appreciate